So it says we're live. Uh, there seems to be a delay on my computer. Right, well I'll mute the computer so I'm not listening to myself twice, but I can see myself on YouTube. So hello everybody from lovely, sunny, warm England. How is everybody? And if you're in, if you're in the, uh, if you're watching this live, leave a message in the chat. And there is, uh, there is super chat enabled, I believe, which means you can go ahead and leave me a tip if you wanted to. Of course, you don't have to, but it would be helpful this time of year. So happy Christmas to everyone. And um, nice to see so many people set reminders and all came in to give me some support. And if you didn't make it, you can watch it in the uh, instant replay. Because uh, when this video is done, it will go, to, go straight on my channel as a video. So, okay. So it's only me watching. Apparently, and uh, we might as well press on. So I said about about two months ago, I think, that I wanted to make a live video, and um, in my channel on Facebook and my Japanese and Chinese antiques identification channel, and um, so I wanted to get a live stream in before Christmas. I don't know why, but Christmas time comes along and I always want to uh, stream live. So hopefully you can hear me OK. If you can hear me, perhaps you leave a comment in the chat and just say, yeah, it's good. Uh, I didn't want to wear my headphones, really. So uh, hopefully you can pick it up. I'm streaming on the iPhone. And hopefully it's all good. So um, what I wanted to do was just talk about um, what to look for, basically, when you're buying Japanese and Chinese and Oriental antiques, because in about the last hundred years, it's become very popular and a lot of people are making fakes and some of the fakes are very good and some of the reproductions are actually antiques themselves and very collectible so it's not easy to tell what to look out for if you're wondering why i'm a bit squashed up it's because i'm in my uh i'm in a little plastic chair little garden chair which is the only thing i could fit in this little bedroom but anyway this is not not my main bedroom because i'm staying at my mum's but it's cozy and warm so no problem Anyway, so getting back to pottery and porcelain, um, the, I haven't really made a big long kind of itinerary of what I'm going to go through, but I thought I'd just discuss it quick and then show you some examples because what I was doing in the build up to Christmas was having uh, was buying pottery with my spare change, having it sent to my mum's house. So I now have a big, uh, not big, but I now have a collection of. Um, mostly Japanese, because that's what I like and that's what I'm familiar with, Japanese antiques that are all boxed up so I can um, unbox them and show you as we go along and just give you some tips really about what to look out for and what not to look out for. I did write a big long post for the Facebook group. Um, I forget the Earl, I'll put it in the comments. And uh, it's on my old iPhone, and my old iPhone stopped working. So the post is still on there, but at the moment, as it stands, I can't retrieve it. But hopefully when I can get that old iPhone working, it's a 5, by the way, I will be able to retrieve that post and put it in the group. Right, so uh, let's just start discussing stuff. That's my mug, by the way. It it looks backwards on my phone, but it looks correct on uh, YouTube. That's actually written into the porcelain and glazed over, so that's permanent. That's my signature, by the way. 
Right, let's, um, I'll just show you this example quick. This is, this is not Oriental, it's English, and it's unsigned. And I bought it in a charity shop recently, and it, it was a bit of, a, it was one of those gambles where you're not sure if it's old or not, but uh, the price was so good you couldn't pass it up. Well, it's called, I believe it's called, uh, I can't even remember the name of it now. It's uh, like a milk jug or something like that. And this is a cabbage leaf design around here with uh, flowers. Not sure what type of flowers they are. But the thing that I was a bit suspicious of is down the centre of the handle here, there's a seam which made me think, oh, it's a modern reproduction. Well, anyway, after I did some research on it, I discovered that they used, before they invented injection moulding, they used to produce pottery in two halves and then kind of weld them together with uh, ceramic, with slip clay. So that's how they used to do that. Apparently that was popular from about the mid 1700s into about the late 1800s and then uh, they stopped doing it because they invented injection molding so although that's in extremely good condition that vase is probably about 100 150 years old so anyway just a, a nice example i bought that in a charity shop just before christmas for two pounds so quite pleased with that and they they sell on eBay for about fifty pounds. So uh, all all this stuff I show you will be available for sale. By the way, if anyone's interested, if you see something you fall in love with or you can't live without, just um, leave me a comment or send me a message on my channel on the about section. There's uh, my email address. So. If you can detect slight nerves in my voice, it's because I was getting excited about doing the live stream. Anyway, so I made a little short list of things to look out for. When this is this whole thing is like geared towards buying, really buying for either for collection or for resale, and um, so you want to you want to be able to buy an antique cheaper than normal retail prices so you can resell it or you, even better if you just buy it cheap for your collection that's good and the good the good news is that the market is so flooded at the moment with kind of export satsuma um katani ware japanese ware antiques in general that you really can pick and choose nice antiques and grab them for a bargain as well and because the sellers don't know what they're selling because they don't know how to read the marks or spot antiques and stuff like that you really can take take them off people in auctions and things like that for bargain you know thrift shop prices and the sellers are none the wiser so um it's almost like stealing i feel like i'm stealing sometimes when i'm when i'm buying these antiques but the seller's quite happy to sell them to me at those prices, so um, it's win-win really, isn't it? It's even better if you can do it in a charity shop, because you, you're helping charity at the same time. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, you know it. <laughs> Ryan is my admin, one of my admins in the group, by the way. Nice to see you, mate. Thanks for showing up. So let's get the... Um, Ryan just reminded me. Let's get the uh, thank yous out of the way quick. So, thanks to everyone for showing up and for your Christmas messages in the group, which I did see. If I didn't get around to seeing them, uh, sorry, if I didn't get around to liking them or commenting back, I will. But I've been kind of um, keeping the group at arm's length for the last two days because I was getting excited about going live and I didn't want to um, get too involved in conversations and stuff like that um thanks to everyone for your contributions to the group which has grown very quickly in about the last six months which is brilliant 
we have now have more than 600 members. Um, I'm hoping what happens with the group is as more people join, the expertise will grow and um, I'll be able to do less work in there basically because other people will recognise things and be able to help out. So that's the goal. Um, we're always looking for expert admins or even experienced hobbyists and um, if anyone's interested in translating in the group I'll put the group URL at the end of the video I'll put it in the comments so you know where to find us but if anyone's interested in translating from Japanese or Chinese give me a shout okay uh, thanks to the admins you're doing a brilliant job and I do appreciate it Ryan Keith and Coco Coco, I know you're busy. It's not a problem. So thanks for sticking around. You could show up occasionally and say hi though, because we'd all like to see you. Thank you to April Dawn Lambert. High five to Ryan. <laughs> April Dawn, I promised I'd give you a shout out in one of my videos, didn't I? For your tip for evaluating stuff for you. So, um, Thank you very much for that. You're officially shouted out. Just because. Uh, Oddveg, I hope your vase arrived and I hope you like it. Uh, we did a did a good deal on that, so I hope you're happy with it. Um, thanks everyone for showing up and um, obviously have a have a brilliant Christmas, but don't go just yet because I'm not finished yet. So. Cool, so let's look at things, what we want to look for when we're buying antiques, okay, because I see a lot of um, a lot of stuff in the group which is not antique and not high quality, and I don't mind it being posted in the group, but we do see quite a lot of it, but the, um, the thing is, if you, if you know what to look for, it's okay if you want to just collect nice pottery it doesn't matter if it's vintage or you know republic era or even late 20th century if you like it then it's a win but if you want high quality items and um, antiques and high value items that you can resale you have to learn to recognize a few things to make it worth your while basically so the number one thing you want to look for if you're just if you just um browsing items so you can learn learn what to look for then any price range is good really go and have a look at the um, really expensive stuff and get a feel for the difference between really expensive and really cheap the expensive stuff is often overpriced you find kind of kinkazan and hotoda valued at ten thousand pounds well, I think I think they'll be very lucky to get prices like, like that unless they are museum quality and they're being sold at Christie's or um, John Nichols, <laughs> uh, Sotheby's or Bonhams or something like that, that you might get high prices. But if you're just reselling it privately or on eBay, you probably want to set your sights a little bit lower than that. So the first thing you want to look for is budget. The number one thing you want to look for is budget um, the reason I say this is because there's no point spending a lot of your energy and a lot of your time looking for items that you can't afford basically and you can get nice antiques at prices you can afford and uh, I'm not exactly rich so I can tell you it's possible and I'll show you when we unbox this stuff what you can pick up on a budget and hopefully you'll be quite impressed with it so if you've got a pen and a paper or a pencil um, I suggest you write these down as a list or a bullet point because they'll help they'll be help you helpful for you later or they might help you later and it'll just you know save you having to spend an hour or however long it is going back through the video trying to find it so grab a pen and a paper so the number one is budget Number two is look for items you're attracted to. That that will save you about 90% wasted time because there's no point going through buying stuff that you don't like 
even if you think it's good, because you want to have integrity in your beliefs and what you're giving to other people. So why would you expect to sell stuff to other people that you don't like yourself? That's my theory anyway. So if you're attracted to it, then you can go on to step three. So that's step number two. Uh, step number three is look for quality of workmanship. After, after about a year of studying Japanese pottery and the marks, it becomes quite obvious uh, the cheap, you know, poor quality stuff that's produced for either tourism or the export market. Not all tourism and export pottery is cheap or bad quality, but you get better at spotting it. And so that's that's number three to look out for is quality. And by quality, I mean, is it handmade? What's the porcelain like? You can tell modern porcelain. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit more as we go through it. But to, after the um, Republic era in China, which was the 1940s, 1950s, uh, porcelain became very low quality to the point that it was almost like glass, almost like Pyrex. Ryan will know what I'm talking about, but those kind of um, items you don't want to pick up for resale because they're very low value and usually not very high quality. You want to look out for if it's handmade or if it's printed. Those kind of um, glassy Pyrex items are usually printed, stenciled and low quality. So if it's handmade and the porcelain is nice. So number four, I'm just going to, um, I'm looking for a little list here that I wrote out earlier. So number four to look for is authenticity. Because you get to spot you get to spot the things that make an item not so good and that can help you save time and money buying stuff that you can't resell. The problem is you get a get a huge collection of cheap stuff that you can't sell and it's just it's not helping you move you forward in the process. You're not really learning about antiques and you're not making a lot of money either. So um we've all done it. We've all got cheap items in our uh, in our collection from when we started out and that's a good thing I reckon because that's like a stepping stone to help you to recognize better quality items let's just see what Ryan say yep I agree Ryan you have to read read the comments because I'm not not reading them out so uh, go and read the comments. But Ryan, Ryan is a curator. He's one of the admins in our group. He's a curator for a well-known auction house, and uh, he's got lots of experience. And he's happy to answer questions and stuff about antiques. If you need any help, thank you, Ryan. So authenticity. The authenticity is the difference between a fine oil painting and a print on canvas that was made at Tesco's. I hope, I hope you know what I mean, but it's that, it's that kind of thing. A work of art has that kind of beautiful quality about it, as if someone spent hours or sometimes days, sometimes even months making it, which is, um, which is true. There is a style of Japanese pottery called One Day Made, where they make the pot and, and decorate it and fire it in one day. And that's a, that's a style and an art all, all to itself. But a lot of the larger intricate pieces would take days or weeks or even months to complete. Some of them are fired two or three times. So authenticity, that was number four. Uh, number five is age. You have to know, you have to learn how to spot genuine age in an item which is not always easy because some of the fakes are very good, as Ryan will tell you. Um, they can apply age, paint it on the foot, and um, add, add speckles to the porcelain and make, make them look very good. And sometimes they're very difficult to spot. So um, look for genuine age on an item. Uh, 
which you will learn to do. So that was number five. And the last one that I can think of, which is probably loads more, but anyway, is um, price. Once you've gone through and you've um, assured yourself that it's genuine and authentic and it's high quality, does it fit into your budget? Because if it's even £10 over your budget, it's going to stretch your finances to be able to buy it. So some sometimes you can, you know, you can make that extra £10 and... Um, buy that piece you really want but you can't do it a lot unless you're selling a lot so and you don't want to put loads of money on your credit card or remortgage your house just to buy pottery that you're going to have in a collection that you can't sell later so look for your price so set yourself a budget whether it's 20 pounds an item 30 pounds an item 50 pounds an item or 100 pounds an item but stick to it because the higher budget you set, the more likely you're going to get stung when you buy a fake and it's going to cost you more. So if you're just starting out and you're practicing, I suggest you buy low, low value items. Right. So some of the things this this is, um, this is a little King Kazan miniature. Nice quality. This is Satsuma. Japanese by the way and they're geisha and um, it's a typical kind of export satsuma style with geisha and bamboos quite often you see wisteria coming down in the background this one's got like a kind of a mountain and trees and it's a miniature you can see it's it's only about four inches so it's not a kinko zen take that back it's actually signed by Kasubi Aichi that's uh, one of his more untidy signatures but that's what it is so this this is one of the ways you can spot the age Kasubi was um, he lived from 1897 to 1984 or something like that so his pottery is not that old so it's it's vintage but it's very high quality even the um export where he produced and he did produce quite a lot of it is i i would say higher quality than most potters around that time and he did win lots of awards and was given the um kind of japanese person of honor or won the award for arts and culture or something it was a very high prestigious award in japan so that that's a nice little piece but that's a that's a kusubi Aichi. Um, I have got King Kazan like that miniatures. Just don't leave the room. I'm going to get two more pots because I said King Kazan and that reminded me. So stay there. Right, I'm back. Well, when I said King Kazan, it reminded me I've got two in the other room. A pair. Now, the, these are a different potter from a different era. King Kazan stopped making pottery in 1927. So any any genuine King Kazan you can get hold of. They range from average, average, low to average quality to extremely high quality. And um, if you can get hold of any genuine King Kazan, it has value, so I recommend looking out for those. They have three or four different types of signatures on the base. But anyway, so you'll have to learn how to spot the King Kazan signatures. But here's another very nice quality one. On on the surface of the paintwork, there is fine moriage in gold. And if you feel it, you can feel it's raised, like raised enamel. So that gilding is something that's very common on Satsuma. But this is very nice quality. It's all hand painted. 
flawless, clean, clean inside. Another thing you want to look for is um, a lot of old vases have been used for ashes, as in funeral ashes. And if you get one of those, don't panic. You can clean it out quite easily with bleach and it doesn't, it doesn't damage the pot at all. So, And that's uh, an early Kinkazan mark, but I don't think this is an early piece. And this is usually a batch number around the rim. And that says Kinkozan, which means something like... Um, I can't remember the exact translation, so someone can correct me on that, but it's something like friendly light mountain or something like that the literal translation just just get them lined up so uh, i got a pair of those from ebay for about 20 pounds so they're probably worth about a pair of those probably somewhere around 400 pounds maybe a bit more so very nice uh high quality but not you know not an unusual design like i say the wisteria around the top looks very nice quality it's all hand painted so whoever made it you know put a lot of um artwork into into his skills and stuff a lot of skills into his artwork sorry so yeah so those are King Kazan, and you can find those more commonly than you'd uh, you'd think. They're not as rare as you'd think because it was a huge company, and um, they were selling pottery for you know making pottery and selling it for about a hundred years, and um, they had lots of lots of different artists working for them. Right, so shall we do some unboxing? So we've got a few people watching now. Just write in the comments, right? Would you rather see Noritake first or would you rather see Satsuma? If no one comments, I'm going to make, make up my own mind and I'll probably go through the Satsuma first because we're talking about that anyway. I've got a big, big stack of boxes here to go through. Satsuma, cool. That's what I'd like to do as well. So, I think it's best if we just start going through the boxes and um, see how they come out. I was going to hope to do it kind of low quality first and then build up, but the boxes I've got on the top are, um, I've got, you know, it could be high quality ones come out first. They have been opened, but some of them I can't remember what's in them. So I've just got a bunch of boxes. To open and go through. Some some more Satsuma. This one I think I believe was used for ashes but I've cleaned it out to uh, cleaned it out with bleach. It does have a slight repair. Let me see if I can show you. There. There. Some people don't like them if they've got repairs. If the repair is neat and it doesn't doesn't ruin the vase, it doesn't bother me. You should expect that um, if you're buying stuff with repairs, it will reduce the value somewhat. Somewhere between, depending on how small the repair is and how good it is, it will reduce the value of the item from between about 10% and about 50%. So that's quite a nice, neat repair, so it doesn't bother me. But anyway, Ryan, can you guess who made that? It's quite, it's quite a big one, look. It's about nine inches. It's a nice samurai figure. Now, what, what the, uh, the master potters used to do was that someone would come up with a good design and then all the other potters in the region would copy it. So it's, it's always debatable about who originated the design because you'll find work from people like 
Kasubi Aichi and uh, Oda Suzanne and um, King Kazan and people like that all come up with similar designs. So Ryan, Ryan, well done, mate. You get you get a house point for that because it was made by King Kazan. Uh, this part of the mark says King Kazan. I'm not sure what this part says because it's starting to wear off, but you can see it's a, a nice old piece from the foot look. Genuine wear and dirt on the foot. And the porcelain is not overly smooth and not very white and not particularly shiny, not like glass or Pyrex. So the glass Pyrex ones are like the worst case scenario. scenario. And the really old Satsuma is more like stoneware. And it's not porcelain. If you tap Satsuma, can you hear it thud? It should thud. Genuine Satsuma should thud and not ring like porcelain because it's actually stoneware. The, uh, the figure, the, the samurai, is um, actually quite common. It's very, very nicely done. It's very nice quality with the gilding and the flowers that I think believe are cherry blossoms. But um, the actual style of it is quite common, Ryan, you'd be surprised. Earthenware, that's it. But very nice decoration and bamboo and what looks like could be peonies, which is a common flower. But yeah, one of my favourites. Got that for about £20 again. That's probably worth five or £600. Beautiful example. Probably my favourite, probably the best one I've got here with me. So, um, and uh, willing to take an offer, by the way. So, <laughs> bear that in mind. Another box. Ryan, is it okay if I tell him about your um, your eBay quick? I'll tell him, I won't go into details, but Ryan bought a um, big lot of vintage um, memorabilia, memorabilia recently, like thousands of items for a very cheap price, and he's set up an eBay shop. You can go, and, Ryan can leave his uh, eBay in the link if he wants to, and you can go and have a look at his eBay shop. So these these two are my other joint favourites. These are probably the uh, the most beautiful ones I've got here. Satsuma, anyway. So completely different style from the previous one. It has um, raised moriage on it, but it's not like all gilding. It's not gilding, it's kind of um, like added slip clay. It actually, I don't know if it'll focus that close, but it, the, uh, the raised parts on it actually stand out on the surface. So it's extremely tactile and um, the figures on it, where are we here, stand out about two millimetres from the vase and the gilding on that's beautiful look. See in here you can see it's been used for ashes and I haven't, haven't cleaned it yet, let me see if I can get the light in there. Yeah. So anyway yeah, Immortals, um, Canon, that's Canon, who was a Bodhisattva, an enlightened Buddhist disciple, and I believe that's Arat, Canon and Arat, and the Immortals, you're correct, Ryan, as usual, and that, Look at look at the quality on that beautiful raised raised gold dragon. 
absolutely beautiful. Look at the dragon, don't look at my face because uh, <laughs> the comparison might not be so good. But anyway, beautiful colours in it. It's kind of greens and blues and stuff like that. Who do you think made it? Completely different style, both, both Satsuma, completely different style to the last one. Difficult to guess who made these, but again, uh, I've seen several in this style by Oda Cezanne and other masters. And this one you'll be surprised to learn is another King Kazan. King Kozan, but the mark is written differently from the previous mark. It's written in seal script, but that's a common King Kazan mark. It is absolutely very fine, Ryan, very fine example. Lovely. And you see a lot of this style with Canon and Arat in very low quality, so it's difficult to spot them from photos. But when you get good at seeing lots of them, you can spot spot the beauty. So that one, I wouldn't like to put a price on that, but it's a bit more than the than the other pair I showed you. And just to make you feel a bit envious, <laughs> I have two of them. And they are they are a mirrored pair. They're a matching pair, but they're mirrored. So, so yeah, gorgeous, King Kazan. Look out for the King Kazan because they make very good quality vases. <coughs> right, moving on. To, uh, I'll try and move through them quite quickly, but I'm just kind of pointing out things to you as we go along. But I don't want to uh, keep us on there too many hours, if you've got better things to do. So I don't, re I don't remember, I don't remember what's in this box, so it'll be uh, a nice surprise for me too. Seems to be a bit milder in the UK the last day or two because I'm kind of hot here. I'm having a hot flush. I don't know if you can tell. I got, I got all excited about going live. I think it's probably because it's Christmas, to be honest. So I've got all these packing chips to fight through. It's going to make a mess everywhere. So those, um, the King Kazan I just showed you, uh, this, this is Noritake, so I'll put that to one side. I'm going to, going to go through the Noritake in a minute. So just saying, those King Kazan, the very nice big pair I held up, picked those up for a very reasonable price. I'm not going to tell you how much, but you'd be surprised and they are I think they're museum quality for fine examples of that that era ah oh, this one yeah I like this one this is uh, not exactly a favorite but it's here and now so I like it I have uh, similar shaped ones at home that are higher quality than this So you get you get house points if you can guess who made this. I'll sit back a bit and let you have a good look at it. But um, I'm not sure if this one is uh, Canon. It does have a female. It may be Canon and, and a rat. Uh, Four-sided, this one, dark blue, cobalt blue, with raised gold moriage on it. You can feel it, feel the texture on it. 
not as high quality as the last ones. Nice quality though, every single centimetre of the of the vase has been decorated. If you look at look at the um clouds at the top here and the mountain. There's kind of no spare spaces apart from apart from the ridges down the side. There's no spare blank spaces on the vase at all. So in that respect it's very nicely decorated. I'd be very surprised if it, that was done in a made in a day. But anyway, no no flaws on it, no chips, anything. And that one is made by Kasubi. Kasubi Aichi. Just holding it off to the side because the light gets it. Look, so it doesn't look too bad on YouTube. It's as focused as I can do it. But that's a Kasubi signature. Kasubi Aichi. He was the son of Kasubi Senosuke, who was his father, obviously, and um, he was a master potter as well and produced extremely high quality satsuma and taught everything to his son, who then produced masterpieces of his own. Kasubi pieces have sold at Christie's for five figure sums, by the way. So if you can get a Kasubi Aichi for under a couple of hundred pounds, grab it because uh, they will appreciate in value. But typical Satsuma style again, but nice quality. I'd say that was kind of medium, medium to high quality. It's kind of above, above, above average, but it's got the signature on it, which gives it more value. So. That's that one. Of course, we're going to have to put all these away again to keep them safe. Right. Let me see what we've got going on here. So, I think that's it for the Satsuma. So, if anyone's got any questions, about Satsuma right in the comments so a couple of things to look out for when you're buying Satsuma is um, like the state of the porcelain you won't be able to to tap it if you're buying on eBay because all you can do is look at the pictures but you can stay away from listings that only have one picture as well by the way uh, you should should have lots of pictures and nice close-ups of the base as well that's actually the same characters, Kasubi Yechi, written in a different style. Uh, the other one was more kind of cursive. As as he went on, his signature became very calligra calligraphic and um, much more stylish as he got older. So you'll learn to spot these things. But so, some of the things on modern reproductions, or you could call them fakes, but they, 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 they can't really be passed as fakes, but on the faces of the characters, look at the outlines. It, on the modern ones, they have, often have red outlines. That's one of the things to look out for, what not to buy. Also, the outlines, uh, if they have dots and broken lines on them, that's a sure sign that it's been stenciled rather than hand-painted. If it's been hand-painted, you have fine brush strokes. Uh, couple of things the other thing is the faces the oriental faces right when they make the modern ones because the way the mind projects you always project onto the world what you think you are when they draw the faces and try and make them look like old satsuma they can't help but project modern faces onto them so that's another thing i look out for if the faces look modern and they've got modern expressions that's always a kind of a red flag that it's a modern item and not an old item. The old ones, the faces are always kind of simplistic and childlike and somehow cartoonish. Anyway, that's my little uh, my little Kasubi. Right, so who wants to see some Noritake? Uh, everybody wants to see Noritake, obviously. 
I think, I believe I've got three pieces with me. See, Noritake were another big company that produced very high quality wares, but they're not so old generally as Satsuma. Satsuma is usually, it became popular in the Meiji period, whereas Noritake is more kind of Nippon era, which is around the 1930s. Meiji went from 1868 to 1912. And then you've got the uh, Taisho period, which only ran for about 10 years, I think. And then the modern period, which is the Showa, Showa or Showa period. So Noritake were um, popular up to about the 1960s, I think. But the early pieces are pre-1900. And if you can get an early mark, the blue, the blue, blue Maruki mark, without the writing on it, which has been uh, hand painted, it's very rare. So I've got a box here. I've got more, more of these green things. I'm trying to get it out gently so the green things don't go everywhere. I don't remember which one this is, so it's be another surprise for me. Um, oh, I've got it. Let's put that one there. That was the one I was getting out before. I'll put it back. So this one, it's all bubble wrapped up. Look. If you ever, sh when you're shipping items. Use loads of bubble wrap, right? Wrap them at least four times, if not eight times. Bubble wrap them, right? So that there's no hard edges sticking out like handles. If you can feel the handles, you haven't bubble wrapped it enough. When you bubble wrapped it, right? Put it in a box that's big enough so you've got at least an inch and a half, if not two inches between the item and the, every side of the box. So the item is in the middle of the box and then pack the box of either polystyrene packing chips, which are good because they're lightweight, or you can use crumpled up or shredded newspaper. Any packing material that is soft and can be compressed. Right When you've filled the box up to the top of the box, so it's a little bit overflowing, so when you close the lid on the box, it compresses the packing material. You should be able to get the box and shake it like that and nothing should move inside so you've got the item in the box suspended in the box compressed with packing material so when you shake it nothing moves so you can drop the box and it won't damage the item that's the theory there's a there's a good video on it if you if you watch it this guy on youtube packs it like a a, a ming little ming ginger jar and he covers it in bubble wrap so it's like a football and he puts it in this box and he packs it with packing chips, polystyrene packing chips, really, not really tight, but tight enough so that, it, that when he closes the lid on the box, it's compressed. And then he takes the out box outside and he goes, smash, hurls it on the floor and then he kicks it and then he's hitting it with golf clubs and hits it with a, hits it with a baseball bat and then he throws it 30 feet in the air and it comes smashing down and he's kind of, comes back in the office and he goes, whew, that was fun. And then he pops open the box and the item's perfectly safe inside. So uh, that's how you do that. But I'll leave you to discover that. But there's nothing worse, right, when you, you sell an item for two or three hundred pounds and everyone's really happy about the money and stuff and then you, you get a little note the next day saying it broke in the post I want my money back that that can ruin your day mate and that's happened to me this Christmas actually not broken but someone bought something didn't read the description and then wanted their money back and of course the money's already spent on bills and things and then you've got to find the money to pay someone back because they they didn't read the 
description. You didn't do anything wrong, but... I won't mention any names, but the person who did that is now banned from my eBay channel. But anyway, that can be really annoying. So we're now looking at Noritake, by the way, getting getting back onto the porcelain. If you listen to this, see that rings like porcelain. Where Satsuma will thud. There is a, there is a slight difference, but anyway. So this, this Noritake is very rare because it has chi traditional Chinese figures on it. So I was a bit careful when I bought this because I thought it might be a reproduction because I've never seen one quite in this style before. But I did, did check it out with my expert friend and she said that she thought it was genuine because Noritake had lots of painters working for them lots of different painters from from the region and also they even employed western artists from america and england and stuff to do do uh, some of their designs so but yeah very nice item got it very cheap i think this was about eight pounds or something it's got the early noritake mark doesn't say Noritake, that's how you can tell it's an early one. Just says made in Japan. You can see uh, gen genuine wear on the foot. Probably not that old, probably kind of 1910, something like that, but decent antique anyway. But Noritake are beautiful quality, extremely well made. You can see some of the gilding starting to wear off there. But if you search eBay for Noritake, you can pick these up really cheap and they are gorgeous, high quality Japanese antiques, genuine antiques. And I've sold these. I sold a pair. If you go to our group and look at the group cover photo, uh, that, that dragon vase was an early Noritake. Um, they, they patented that... that Noritake symbol in about 1905, I think, was the earliest known um, time that that symbol showed up. And mine was before then, so it was probably late 19th century. I sold a pair of those, so I picked them up in a garage sale for £10 with a box of other treasures, put those on eBay, sold a pair of those the next day for £250. So that was a good deal. I was happy about that. And I've sold this kind of quality for £80 and £150. And that, that's, a good, that's a good price. That's a good price, a fair price for high quality Noritake. And people collect them, especially rare ones like this. So if you can grab them for a bargain, grab them. Because they won't ever be made again. You'll never get them again. Like they might fake them or reproduce them, but they'll never be the same. So have I got that the right way up? I think so. It's probably not in focus because I'm on the iPhone, but anyway. Postman, Ryan, talking about Postman. Where's my box gone? There. Talking about Postman. Do not send your valuables. Not, not, not like disrespecting anyone, but don't send your valuables by Hermes. I've had boxes crushed and uh, lost and sent to wrong addresses and stolen using Hermes. eBay won't like me for saying this, but they won't compensate you for fragile items. If, you're, if your item gets damaged with Hermes in the UK, then you've lost your item and you've lost your money, basically. You won't get anything back. Royal Mail, you can insure your item you're covered up to £20 for first and second class and up to £50 for signed for. But you can get more insurance cover if you want. Provided you pack it very well and take photos of the item and the packing and you mark the box fragile, handle with care, Royal Mail will compensate you for damage if you take out insurance. So just that little tip. Right. Let's see what we got in this box. A 
Yeah, I've seen seen some awful videos about Hermes. The way that their um, sorting offices are. Just piles of boxes on piles of boxes and the boxes at the bottom are getting crushed and stuff. So so they're cheap they're a cheap courier. They do the, they do a job, you know, they've got a job in the world, but be careful if you think about they're getting they're better actually since since eBay partnered with them. They have been a lot better. Um, I've had stuff sent with Hermes and it's come safely, so they are getting better. But it, just think twice about it before you send valuable stuff in the post. So... I'm just trying to remember. Right, so this one... This one is my current all-time favourite. Noritake vase. Absolute masterpiece. Museum quality. And beautiful. Very pretty. And you wouldn't believe how much I got that for. It's not it's not raised moriage like the Satsuma, it's just very fine gilding. clean inside and that one's never been used for anything I don't think it's just been kept as collectible but yeah beautiful quality you tend tend to find the gilding wears off on the handles that's how they were held but I never I never hold them with the handles because the first thing you see with items that have broken or been repaired always the handles unless they were dropped it's always the handles that go first and you, if you look carefully when you buy an item Always look for little little hairline cracks on the handles where they've been repaired. The uh, the Dragonware vases I sold, you know, the group cover photo, they had a repair on the handle, but the guy who bought it in America, he was just, he thought they were just amazing. And they were amazing. I've never seen any, any look quite like them. And they were really old as well, so they're so collectible. But this one's just beautiful. Look at the flowers on it, look. Try and get it get it the right way up for you. It's got the original Noritake Maruki mark. I think it's Maruki. There's a, another name for it as well, but it, um, apparently it means to overcome adversary. And the 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 company started using it when they brought out the McKinley Tariff Act. And Westerners started buying and ordering Japanese wares and the Japanese found it very difficult to do business with the Westerners. And um, so they made this mark and it means to overcome adversary. And that's why they chose it, because uh, they were doing business with Westerners. But that's the mark. I believe it's called the Maruki mark. There is another name for it. If you search uh, Noritake back stamps then there's lots of really good links will tell you all about it. So do you like that one, Ryan? Sweet, isn't it? Right. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that one for my collection or I'm going to sell it because uh, it's just so pretty. It would be, you know, if I kept that, in a glass cabinet somewhere, I'd still be very happy with it. And I picked it up for a song, basically. And if you're uh, watching in America, that means I got it at a very good price. Well, I think I've just got two more. And then we can have a little uh, Q&A if anyone wants to ask any questions. This one... Oh, I've missed, I've missed this one. This is Satsuma. This is one I ordered a year ago that's been sat at my mum's house waiting for me to come and get it and then we had all the lockdowns and stuff and I got kind of stuck at home so I couldn't come and get it but as soon as I could come over here I did 
and then uh, and then they had another lockdown, so I decided I'd stay for Christmas. So whatever, whatever, Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock. I'm not going to tell you what I think of them, but I think they're uh, exaggerating things a little bit, to be honest. Without wanting to get into conspiracy theories. Right. So, yep, yeah, that way up. Satsuma again. Now, I know these so well now. I can look at these va vases. I've got into the habit of calling them vases because that's from America, but they're vases in England. I can look at these vases now and I can recognise who made them just by looking at the decoration on them. Because you can tell, it's like a, a painter, like an artist. You can just recognise the style and the figures they paint and stuff like that. I hope the lighting's all right in here. Just scratching my beard. I had, uh, I, I went and <laughs> washed my face just before the uh, live stream and I realised I had this big beard. It was like Father Christmas and I was like, it was 20, 20 to nine and I had like, 10 minutes to have a have a quick beard trim, but anyway, it's a bit scratchy now, so. Any ideas who made that one? Beautiful decoration. Um, cherry blossoms. And uh, a figure, I believe, in Chinese, traditional Chinese dress. And then you always seem to get the the little boy who kind of tags along with her. I'm not sure. It's probably characters from Japanese myth or history or folklore or something. Beautiful um, cherry tree, cherry blossoms. Very well made. It's got um, six six sides, six sided. Ryan thinks everything, everything that's nice is King Kazan. <laughs> you should be able to spot that, Ryan. Just just from the um, characters on it, who made that. And if, if you don't, if you can't spot them, when I tell you, you'll probably spot it next time. Because after you've seen about a dozen of them, you recognise his style. This one was used as a lamp. It was converted to a lamp and now it's been had the lamp fittings taken of it and made back into a vase again so it's no good for holding water but it's a uh, it's a very early kasubi hechi kasubi signature is um somewhat different to his father's signature senosuke and you can spot the difference between those as well but this has got some nice age to it and it's either an early Kasubi piece or it could be a Senosuke, but I think from the signature it's Kasubi Echi. And this is the hole where the cord went for the lamp. So it's no good as a, as a flower pot or for anything other than decorative use now, but very nice pot. I would probably list that for about 500, 450. Because they're so collectible, because they're Kasubi. If that was sold at Christie's, you might might be worth five thousand pounds. No problem, Ryan. Educate me back. You know how it goes. I'm only good at correcting typos. So yeah, lovely little vase. It's about seven inches. That one. I can measure them, right? What I've done is I measured the span of my palm from the tip of my middle finger to the tip of my thumb, and that's seven inches. So I can do a quick quick guesstimate now on um, vase size. So that's about seven inches. Every man should know the span of his hand. Some of you will get that. But anyway, yeah. Right, moving on, I think I've got one more, maybe two more. I can go, go in the other room and get one more, which is a nice, nice example. There might be, might be two in this one. Let's 
to another another nice surprise. I know I know what one of them is because I haven't seen it yet, and uh, I'm expecting it to pop out. There might might be two in here, and then I've got one little one in the other room I can show you as well. But Ryan will probably say these wouldn't wouldn't fetch that much. Oh, I remember what it was. It's one of them. They might not fetch that much in auction, and that that's possibly true. But it depends depends which auction, basically. Yeah, there's there's two in this box, so double treat for you. See, that's all packed in newspaper. Look, and it did it arrived here safely. So as long as you um, pack it, compress it around the item quite well, not too tight, so it's going to be damaged, but put plenty in there so that it sticks out a bit, so that when you close the lid, it's compressing down on it, so nothing moves inside. That's what you do. Of course, I've got to put all these away again tonight and, and wrap presents and do everything, and get dinner and do everything else as well. But anyway, I'll show you, the, uh, show you this little Noritake first. Just brought this because you know, like I said at the start of the video, if, if you're attracted to a piece, then that's nine tenths of um, of buying a good item is buy the buy the ones you're attracted to, basically. the The auction market is limited in fairness. I think what he means in fairness is that's a fair comment, but yes, it is. Um, I always sell my stuff buy it now best offer because I put a price on it that I think it's worth and then I take an offer depending on a person's circumstances. Um, I don't usually argue about offers because I can buy them so cheap that if it's if it's in profit and it's around where I, where I want then if the person wants it and is willing to pay that and they're happy with it then I'm happy with it but you know this is a in auction, the trouble with auction is if you're doing it a lot on eBay, you have to pay for a reserve, you pay a fee for a reserve, and I don't like putting reserves on it. And the other thing is, if you set the auction start price too high, say at £100, and that's what you're willing to accept, you don't get any bids on it. And if you put it at 99 pence and you get one bid, you have to sell it. 99 pence you can cancel it but if you do it a lot you'll get reported to ebay and stuff so i don't like using auctions for that reason they, they are good they're exciting and they're fun and i win most of my items that i buy for a bargain i win them really cheap in auctions doing that and it seems somewhat fair unfair but you have to that's that's the nature of auctions you have to protect yourself so that you're not giving stuff away at you know dollar shop prices basically so i always do them buy now or offer and then just accept an offer if, if i put an item up for 200 pounds and someone offers me 110 then you know i'll think about that and that might be a good offer but it depends how much i paid for it how much i think it's worth basically if i think it's worth more than that then i might counter offer but anyway that is a little Noritake candlestick. And just look at the the paintwork on that. I mean it's only it's only a little bit thicker than my thumb. And it's got all that beautiful gilding on it. Really nice early Noritake. The um the paintwork on it, it's a scene. It's a scene with uh it's a typical Noritake scene. It's a tree and river and a mountain in the background probably which is typical Noritake scene they did, they did that scene a lot but the early ones the originals they're all hand painted and they look like oil paintings they're just so intricate and so beautiful the artists were very skilled at painting pottery and if you, if you can get the early ones the later ones you find some of them are printed and then they've they've lost quality and they're not so good they're, they're kind of yellowy 
and the 1950s, 1960s, and they're not so good. They're okay. People still collect them, but the early stuff, you want the early Noritake. So it's a candlestick, basically. And put a candle in. It doesn't look like it's ever been used for candles. It, they're so intricate, and people collect them, that they, they've never been used. That's why they don't have much wear on the foot. But... Um, Nice old Noritake mark. Just a, there's a slight delay on the computer, so you see it about two seconds afterwards. But yeah, uh, didn't pay much for that. Paid about fifteen pounds for that. It's probably worth two hundred pounds. Not sure in auction. You can get you can get lucky. Ryan will tell you all about auctions. You can get lucky, and sometimes you can get more than you bargained for. But quite a lot of the time, you get a lot less as well because people in the auctions are also looking for bargains. So unless they really want it and they're competing with someone, they'll bid low, and that's uh, that's the reality of auctions. They are good, but it's also a bit of a game, a bit of an art to um, doing well in auctions. Ryan's much better at auctions than I am, I have to say. So, right, where are we going? Ah, this little one. This is not this is not Japanese, but I will will tell you about it because it's something worth looking out for. Uh, we've been online over an hour already, so thank thanks for sticking with me. Just I'll show you this one. We'll have um, I've got one more little one, little Naritaki to show you. And um, we'll do a quick Q and A, but this one I bought for I can't remember eight pounds, maybe ten pounds, is made by a company in Spain called Arroyo, and they make very nice, high quality pottery, and it is signed with a big A. It's not easy to see, but it's there. Uh, sometimes it says the Royo. Uh, Google it for the spelling. But it's got a nice plaited handle. Uh, I've sold these for thirty, forty pounds, and I've seen them advertised for sale for six hundred. <coughs> the bigger, bigger jugs with more intricate pottery, but they're very typical Spanish kind of earthenware. But very nice, very high quality, Arroyo collectible. If you can find those, then uh, buy them cheap because they're good resale value. Right, so stay stay with me while I just go and get this. Just got to put these carefully as my bed here and just spacing them out carefully so they don't knock into each other. If anything gets broken, I won't be happy. Um, let me just see. Right, just one more little one. Just stay in the room, please. And I'll be back in ten seconds. Right, I'm back. Thank you for not leaving the room. Right, this is the last little Noritake of the evening. So um, brilliant that you all you all stuck with me and watched to the end. Thank you for that. So this is the um, this is slightly later Noritake, probably nineteen thirties, maybe maybe mm, around that sort of area. Anyway, I don't think it's nineteen forties, but you can see what I mean about the the yellow starting to come in, and the the scenes, the the paintwork on the scenes is not so high quality. It is hand painted this one, but already the quality is starting to drop off. Still nice. It's got little little ring handles, but they're not. They are they're not loose. They're fixed to the side of the pot, and it's got some nice gilding on it. 
typical Noritake. It's probably worth 100, 150 pounds. Um, if you can find it right with just the blue Maruki with no writing around it, that's the earliest mark, Noritake mark. Look out for those. And it won't be kind of speckled like printed, it'll be like hand painted. So look out for those. It, you know, it will be neat. Don't don't buy them if the hand painting looks awful, like someone did it and the pen slipped or the paintbrush slipped, because it's probably fake and there are a lot of fakes about. But uh, those are the ones to look out for. This is tiny. Look at this. About three and a half, four inches high. Well, that that's seven inches. So about three and a half. Now I swapped that with my mum, right? This is a perfectly legit deal. Perfectly legit deal. I swapped this little one. For for the pair of King Kazan. Because she preferred the little one. So I actually I bought them. I bought them all, but I gave gave this pair to my mum. And um, they were kind of a bit bigger and cluttering up, and she just wanted the little one, so we did a swap. So that was a good deal because the uh, the pair of King Gazan are probably more valuable. But anyway, I love this little jar. But um, yes, yeah, mum mum's little favourite porcelain. Listen, it rings. Satsuma thuds. Right, so. Hopefully that gave you some good examples of what to look for and what not to look for. And um, we haven't got a lot of people in the room, to be honest, but it did make it worthwhile because this will go on my channel now. And I was a little bit worried at the start that I would be talking to myself and um, the energy doesn't come through quite so naturally if you're talking to yourself. It would be like, oh, well, here's the next one, you know, and we just get through it as quickly as possible but this, it has been fun and um, we are getting close to Christmas so if anyone's got any questions before we go I'll do my best to answer them or at least acknowledge them anyway even if I can't answer them so in in our um, in our group we have um, a nice a nice little group of um, uh, Experts, yeah, let's, let's call ourselves experts. Like some of us are hobbyists and some of us do it for a living, but uh, we have a little knowledge base and we can usually work out identify items. So if you want to post your item in there and get an identification or a value, you're welcome to do that. But um, unless there's any questions, then I haven't got any more pots to show you probably have actually but they're English stuff I and mean, we're not talking about English stuff at the moment so best Noritake so I find with Noritake earlier earlier is better because you have to think in terms of if, if you're buying to resale then you need to think in terms of resale value and the more collectible an item is, the more chance you've got of selling it. That doesn't necessarily mean it'd be the highest value, but you'll sell the fastest. Um, early Noritake from around 1900 to about 1908. If you go and look at the Noritake marks for that era, I'd say those are the, the best ones to look out for, the older ones. There are nice quality later ones, but they're kind of mid-century and um, they produced a lot of it. And there's a lot of Noritake patterns and um, they're not so high value. Did you know there's a website, Ryan, where every Noritake pattern has been catalogued? And you can go and look up every Noritake pattern and it's got a pattern number. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, the tip, the tip is look for age and the mark. 
if you go and examine the Noritake marks, the older ones are in blue, later ones are green and gold and things like that. Like I said, try and get the ones, if you can find them, they're very rare, but if you can find the ones without writing, the less writing the better, because Made in Japan was brought in around 19, somewhere between 1912 and 1921 with the McKinley Tariff Act. So if you can find them without writing, then that's better. But go go for quality. Quality and age, really, is, is all I can recommend because that's antique is better than kind of postmodern, in my opinion, anyway. And the quality, the quality of the old, of the original craftsmen seems to be better than when they were became popular and they were mass produced. So earlier, earlier is better in terms of quality as well. I mean, that one's very fine. I'd put that in a museum. The, the graduation in the background is something that became more prevalent as time went on. They did that a lot. You'll find entire sets of, of reasonably low quality Noritake stuff, uh, tea sets, cups, saucers, teapots and stuff with that kind of pattern on. Normally it has a, a lake with a swan on it. If you Google Noritake stuff, you'll see a lake with a swan. That's a very common Noritake pattern. But this graduation, it's nice here, but on the older pieces, it's just like just like yellow all over it, and they look horrible, in my opinion. But I'm sure people who uh, who are watching who own them like them, so they're about they're about the same size look. This one's lightweight like an eggshell, and this one's heavy like a stone. Made around the same period. Completely different styles, Satsuma, Noritake, both made in Japan. The opposite applies to Satsuma. Finer is the earlier with the strongest graduation. Well, Satsuma again, see, I go for either, either age or if it's a later piece by someone like Kasubi or Cezanne, uh, go for quality, finer, finer detail. But if you can get old, older Satsuma, older is better, really. Get very old Satsuma before it was even marked or became popular as, a, as an export piece and it looks more like traditional Japanese art. Yes, the better. Better the graduation, the finer the graduation, that's very true. Usually a sign that it's a, a good early original, that's true. I can't show you examples of um, not so good pieces without going online. Well, I I know um, Kasubi did some nice graduation work on his later pieces. Um, Satsuma opposite. I'm not sure what you mean. Noritake, the finer the graduation, the better. Yes, that's true. That's a sign that it's an earlier piece. As time went on and it got into the 40s and 50s, Noritake quality seemed to go downhill a bit, depending on the maker. Uh, the artist, sorry, because Noritake, like King Kazan, had lots of different artists. Okay, did that answer the question? Right, my dinner is calling, and Christmas is just around the corner. Any more questions? One last question before we go. We have five people in the room now. It always gets busy towards the end. So if you just came in the room, we we're just talking about Japanese pottery, Satsuma and Noritake specifically, aging them and valuing them and what to look for and what not to look for. Right, uh, early Satsuma is often not marked. Um, Satsuma, 
the expression, which means the joy of beauty, I think, was actually derived by Westerners. If you went to an old pottery in Kyoto or Yokohama and said, uh, have you got Satsuma for sale? The local potters would look at you as if you were stupid. They wouldn't know what you're talking about. And local potters, there's a saying amongst them that said, if if Satsuma if Satsuma is marked, i.e. if it's got a if it's signed by the maker, if it's marked, it's not real Satsuma. So that's something to think about. If you get early Satsuma that's not marked, that's a good thing. In most people's books. Anyway, it's good to have them signed because you know you know who made it and then you can attribute value to it and stuff. But anyway. Right, Ryan, last question. What's for dinner? <laughs> Mum's made a shepherd's pie, uh, mincemeat and potato and grated cheese on top, I think. And I'm starving because I've only had like one bit of toast all day today. And I've been tired as well. The last couple of days, the run up to Christmas, I think it's catching up with me. So, nice one. Thanks, everyone. Have a brilliant Christmas. And um, I'll put links... <coughs> I'll put links in the description to my Facebook and sign up and subscribe to my channel and uh, have a beautiful Christmas everyone and a happy new year and I'll see you all in the new year. Ryan suggested that we do a, do a giveaway, do a raffle giveaway where everyone can buy a ticket for five or ten dollars and then we can like raffle a, a little antique so if, if that's a good idea perhaps we can do that in the new year. Right, dinner, cup of tea calling. I'd love to make some pottery, by the way. I'd love to, uh, when I'm not here in a thousand years, I'd like people to say, Matt Blythe made that. That would be so cool, like King Kazan or Kasubi or Oda Cezanne. <coughs> I'd like to do some, some oil painting as well. I think I'll do that when I retire. So, so when I'm on a cloud with Jesus, <clears throat> looking down in about four or five hundred years and uh, my artwork's being sold in Christie's for 245 million. We can have a good laugh about it. <laughs> right, thanks guys. Brilliant, thanks for showing up. Really good to chat with you. Thanks Ryan, I'll see you in the group, mate. Have a lovely Christmas and uh, let's all hope 2021 is a much better year this year because put that other stuff to bed and forget about it hopefully right stay safe stay healthy everyone lots of love see you soon i'm not sure how to end it <clears throat> i think i'll just press this little cross all right bye for now <laughs>